I probably don't need to eat as much. That's probably part of it, so. Okay, you good? Were you filming that whole thing? Hey guys, welcome to another week of Online Midweek. We're continuing our series on influencers, and today we're gonna look at Peter. Peter is a guy that is absolutely instrumental to the uh, founding and the foundation of the church as we know it today. Um, but actually, Peter um, didn't always take a stand for Christ. In fact, in Luke 22, which is our passage today at the tail end of the chapter, uh, Peter denies Jesus and knowing him on three separate occasions in one single night. And so what we wanna look at is, as influencers in our community, on social media, in all of our life, are we taking a stand for Jesus or are we denying him? And so I want us to be really open with ourselves today, which side of the ball are we on um, and how we can take a stand and use our influence uh, to point other people toward Jesus. And so I hope you guys will pay attention, will lock in um, and really evaluate yourself today as we look into the passage of Luke 22. Yeah, tell me what you want, then me I'm the only one. So if I were to have dinner with any three people, um, Michael Jordan will be number That's one. That's a given. I'm shocked. Yeah, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Is he the best basketball player ever? It's not even a debate. Not even a debate. Is there a close second? Like a modern day player that you might say? I mean, Kobe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would, no, um, Michael Jordan, Daniel um, in scripture. Oh, I was like, who's Daniel? <laughs> Daniel just Daniel. Um, Daniel right. from the lion's den, um, that one. Um, and um, I've only got two. Um, and, and, um, Maybe your wife. I'm, no, I, I have dinner with her every All the night. time. That's yeah, literally every, day. every <laughs> night. Um, I was thinking maybe um, I might go... Roy Williams, North Carolina's basketball coach. coach. So I'll get, I'll get, I'll get two basketball guys and then a biblical guy. So that's my, that's my three. I'll, Michael Jordan because he's the greatest. Roy Williams because North Carolina basketball and Daniel, um, because that is a guy that is the most like to me lived what he believed despite consequence at all time. Daniel that, could be a goat of scripture. Daniel is my goat of scripture. Go? He's the. Uh, <laughs> He's my my youngest son. His middle name is Daniel because of that. So Daniel that's three. That's mm. it. Daniel three. Good passage. Two, one, three, and six. Those are my those are my go tos. So okay. Nice, nice. Anybody else? Who? What about you? I can also only think of two, but okay. I've got to say William Shakespeare is up there, and okay, then to be. Kristen Bell. But I cannot Ooh, think yeah. of anyone else. Not even, not, you wouldn't bring her husband involved in that? Because they're really funny together. That's true. <laughs> Kristen is... Bell and her husband. Okay. There we go. That's okay. my three. Why? <laughs> I love Kristen Bell so much. More than, I, she's like my favorite celebrity. I love her so much. Okay. Maybe yeah. Kristen's watching this. Hopefully. Oh, Kristen Bell, if you're watching true. this, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> what about you? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm not like... I'm so indecisive when it comes to these kind of questions, mm, but not surprising. I probably what? No, just, <laughs> <laughs> just talking to All right. you. Um, I'd probably have to say um, my mom. Oh wow! I have a good time with her. Yeah. Um, mm, let's see. I don't know. This is awkward. It's Sometimes it's just hard. To... Three, it's just three people. No, I know. It's just like, who are those three people going to be? You know. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Jesus. I mean, mm. yeah. I feel like I would just feel a little intimidated. You know. Just a little bit. Mm. He's just too perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's going to be a whole a whole lot of eternity with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Definitely my mom, though. So, I mean, okay. that's... Hey, Mary Bale. Yeah. Mom Mary Bale's cut. coming in strong. Shout Dead or alive. That works. <laughs> I'm a... Top of my list would be Billy Graham. Uh, 
phenomenal uh, ministry for so many years over the decades. Uh, man, I'm, now I'm kind of like perplexed. Do I want to go the athlete route as well? Yeah, you probably should. Should I? Um, Just not Shane Battier. Not Shane <laughs> <laughs> Um You know, someone who I admired for so many years in coaching, not because he had a perfect history, but because he was such a, just a great coach. And I got to watch him coach while I was at Oklahoma State. It was Eddie Sutton, great legendary basketball coach. Uh, I never had an opportunity to, to sit down with him and talk. Um, said hi to him many times, shook his hand, but never got to talk with him. Uh, he passed away. And then, man, okay, so quite honestly, and maybe somebody else is watching this, but Clayton King. Mm. Clayton King would be my third. And Clayton is a, is a pastor, uh, an evangelist, a great man, and I look up to him in a lot of ways. So just being able to sit down and have a, have a meal with him would be awesome. That dude's, awesome, awesome. he's, I got to ride in the car with Clayton one time. Um, I had to take, I, I picked him up for a D now. Yeah, picked him exactly. Up the airport. Same thing. He spoke at an event for me a long time ago and I was taking, I took him and his wife back to the airport. And the thing that's cool about Clayton um, is he is one of the just the boldest dudes I've ever met. Like, it doesn't matter what the situation, where he's at, who he's with, like, he's going to be bold and he's going he's gonna to share his faith and he's going to be unashamed about it, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Um, it makes me wonder, like, just hearing about Clayton and thinking about that, what's the boldest thing maybe you've ever done? Like, maybe it doesn't even necessarily have to be, like, sharing your faith bold like but just like you did something that man it really took it really took a lot of guts to do or something like that I hate roller coasters okay. and any of my friends who are watching this know that the first time I rode the Titan at Six Ooh. Flags was horrible I sobbed through most of it I was crying eyes were closed the entire time but no, no that judgment. took probably the most guts of anything I've ever done Lance your story is very similar to that no, I'm just <laughs> uh, no, we were literally at Six Flags the week before school started we took the kids and my middle son Clay um, he's he's not a big fan of roller coasters mm -hmm. and we got him on one, and um, he had a very similar experience. Yes. Um, but Addie, my daughter, she she hopped on Titan, and she just, she loved was right it. on it. Like, she loved it. So I mean, roll, I, I was a senior in high school before I would ride a roller coaster. That's no, that's oh, not yeah. a like I was. I went on one as a fourth grader in San Antonio. It was the last um, one for a long time. And it, it's like it was like the third largest drop on a wooden roller coaster in America. And I was like, I'm done. No. I'm, I, I, I wouldn't do it again. I was a senior in high school. Yeah. Casey, did you hear my story from a few weekends ago? Where I was talking about Anna Lee, my daughter. Yes. Same thing. I she held can't on. do roller coasters. She enjoyed, she once she got off of it, she she thought it was cool, but that first moment. Was oh yeah. Rough. Terrifying. <laughs> it was rough. I get that. I get that. Um, but the bold, boldness is really a big deal and like there's unfortunately like there's a time where like we can we can be really bold mm -hmm. or sometimes when we need to be bold sometimes we cower instead oh, yeah. right and I think a lot of times like w when it comes to our day-to-day -day life where that typically happens is in our relationship with our friends right mm -hmm. um, is we we the moments that we are supposed to you know where we, it doesn't matter if we're bold or not like that's when I'll be the boldest I mean, you asked me about Michael Jordan a little bit ago and, or LeBron James or whoever else you want to compare him to. Like, I will argue till I'm blue in the face MJ. about that, right? Yeah. yeah, I will tell you a million reasons why Michael Jordan fans. is the greatest basketball player right. of all time. But, like, there are times where it, I have to stand up for my faith that all of a sudden I get really quiet. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever found yourself in a similar situation like that or what, maybe what that's been like or how, how you've seen that maybe in your life? Definitely. I think going to a public school too, knowing that not everybody around me has those same beliefs, sometimes it can be not unwelcoming, but just like a discomfort and like always walking on eggshells. It's like, what can I say? I don't want to offend anybody, but it's like, I know in my heart that like what I believe is true and that I want to share that with every single person around me. But sometimes it's just like, I don't know if I should, I don't want to be judged. I don't want like the people around me to think I'm weird for talking about Jesus 24 seven. And like, that's something where I have to like think back on it and be like, man, like I shouldn't be scared of that because right. my faith is something that I'm the proudest of. But like, mm. I always around school, I'm like, oh, I don't know what I should or shouldn't be doing here, stuff like that. Yeah, for me, it's kind of the opposite actually. Cause I go to a private school where like 
our entire like academic structure is built around Christ so like it's almost like you want to assume that everybody there like has a relationship with Christ and like people like claim to it and but you just honestly you never know like who is and who isn't like because you know you can be a Christian and make poor choices and you can be um, a non-believer and make good choices so I mean like it's just hard to tell unless you actually like take that step and like have a difficult conversation with somebody about like yeah. their faith and you know like actually invest in somebody yeah so so obviously with with friendships there's there's pressure right there's peer pressure and that can be good mm-hmm. yep that can also be bad there can be some negative to it um but maybe describe for us tell us about a time where you experienced peer pressure good bad well, when I was in seventh grade, you know, um, my mom and my friend's mom planned this surprise beach trip for me and my two best friends. And it was coming up real close, but I have to be honest, I had a little bit of a talking problem, believe it or not, um, when it came to class. And so I would get demerits, which were like sign ups or, or sign out or whatever, like when you would like get in trouble. Like and red, green, yellow, blue. No, no, no. Like they were like little forms and like your parent had to like sign them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so many, you got so many of them, you had detention and stuff? Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Gotcha, if gotcha. you get three, you had a detention. And so my mom made this rule and it was like, if you get one more demerit, you're not going on the trip. And so, you know, testing my waters, the day we were leaving for the trip, um, I was like, you know what, like, I really need to work on some homework, like, before I go on this trip. And my friend was like, why don't we just skip athletics? Like, it's fine. Like, we just don't have to go, and we'll just go and sit in, the, like, this teacher's room. And I was like, I don't know, like, shouldn't we, like, ask the coach first, like, see if that's okay? Because, like, I don't think we're just supposed to, like, go. And she was like, no, 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 don't worry about it. It's fine. Like, it's, it's Coach, Hop- Coach Hobson. Like, come on. It's fine. And so I was like, I don't know. And she was like, no, seriously, like, no big deal. So I was like, okay. And so I went, and my coach ran around the whole school trying to find us because there were three of us that were missing from her class. Mm -hmm. And she came in, and she found us, and we were, like, sitting in this teacher's classroom, and the teacher in there, we had lied to her. We had told her that our coach had given us permission to be in there. Mm -hmm. And so... (laughs) She, we, I was, like, begging her. I was, like, please don't give me a demerit. Please don't, like, tell my mom, like, I, I'm leaving for this trip today. And she gave me a demerit, and I didn't get to go on the beach trip. Your mom kept you from going on the beach trip? Um, she did. And you still want to have dinner with her? I was going to say. Yeah, she's, wait yes. a minute. Wow. I, hey, that's <laughs> you know, big time. You that's, know, I'm still not exactly over it. Yeah, it was, it was, sounds it was, like it. It was a hard sounds time like for it. me. I'm going to well, be so honest. Hey, that's actually, I think it's an important thought. Like, what's the relationship between peer pressure and influence? Because I think some of it, I think this is a clear example of, like, your mom had great influence on you, yeah. right? And it's, it's, it kind of stood out and made a difference. Or maybe peer pressure may not net a positive result mm-hmm. or as much of a, as a positive result as the word influence. So I'm kind of, I'm pitting the, word, the words peer pressure and influence up against each other. Right. Maybe unpack. What do you think? Like, is there a relationship there? Are they oil and water? And they don't mix. Like, when you hear peer pressure and influence, how do they relate? I think they both have very different connotations because when I hear peer pressure, I automatically think bad, and when I hear influence, I'm like, oh, people are good influences on you. But like, both of them can be good or bad. I think like where I see a difference between them or like similarities is like peer pressure for me is like being consistently pushed or told like oh, you should do this thing, or, like, you should come with me to go to this place or stuff like that. But, like, influence to me is when I see someone act a certain way, and it's like, oh, like, that's good. Like, I want to act that way. I want to be like them or, like, have friends that are like that person because I want to have those kinds of influences in my life, like so you, that. So you feel like an influence is more, like, based on somebody's action, mm-hmm. where peer pressure typically happens by somebody's words of, of trying to convince you in the other way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like that's that how sense. I kind of see it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, get you that. don't actually like have to say anything to influence somebody, like yeah. good or bad, actually. Like you can see somebody doing something bad and like it could influence you either good way or a bad way, like, you know. Yeah. But then like whereas peer pressure usually comes from people like telling you like, 
like, yeah. trying to get on you about something and, like, trying to force you into doing something that, like, makes you uncomfortable or, you know... Sure. ...is, like, good for you, I guess, too, but... Yeah. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to think of how to ask this in the, or, or to discuss this in the right way of, like, how do you... How do you determine, like, in your day-to-day... Like what you're going to allow to influence you versus what you're, you know, in a good way or a negative way versus like, how do you know when to, to listen, you know, to that, like to that voice in your head that says, yes, I'm going here. Or, no, I'm not doing that. Like, how do you, how do you like navigate that in between? Because if we're being honest, I mean, the, the high school that you guys live in yeah. is a very different high school oh, yeah. than what Jason and I lived in. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you're. I mean, you, you get influence from this, mm-hmm. right? Like these didn't exist when we were in high school, right? Well, maybe when I was in, they might've when you were. Um, but like they, these didn't really exist when we were in high school, but there's so much, I think there's so much influence here that maybe then ultimately even leads into potential peer pressure on the other side. Would you agree with that? I mean, mm-hmm. is that, am I right in that or am I? I definitely think so. And I think like you said, with the phones, like social media for me, sometimes it's like, I just need like a week or a month off of it. Cause it's like, wow, like seeing people hang out every weekend it's like oh I'm doing homework on this Saturday and they're all hanging out maybe I should be hanging out with my friends so like I think there definitely hits a point where it can be like oh like that's influencing you but like it might hit peer pressure at a point when it's like oh I'm seeing all of my friends hanging out and I want to be a part of that but I know there's better choices and like better ways to be using my time than that yeah Mm -hmm. yeah for me like the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of influence is like I think of um I actually think of um, a negative thing that like kind of goes on um, very commonly like today and that's like listening to like certain music and I know like I'm influenced to like listen to like bad music when I'm around a certain group of people or like um, even just like influence like not to say anything like if I feel uncomfortable like with the topic of discussion or like um, like the music that's being played or Um, just like the choice of words people are using like usually I'm influenced in a way that like tells me not to say something when I know I should Hmm. I like this quote I don't know who it came from but it's on our notes I want want to read it and share it the notes say the biggest platform your influence can stand on is peer pressure Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that you know it's an opportunity to be bold and do what's right while still being different. Mm -hmm. So with that thought, let's kind of transition into thinking about even the story that was told about, you know, Peter Mm -hmm. denying Jesus uh, three times. Can you name a time in your life where you made a mistake from peer pressure like that? I think for me, definitely, like I said with school earlier, like there's definitely been times where I'd been in school working on a Bible study or something like that, where it's like, oh, I need to prepare this certain thing for midweek later or something like that, so I just bring it to school with me. And there'd be people that would ask me questions, and the questions weren't phrased in the nicest way. It was definitely more from like, a, oh, I'm going to take a stab at you than like, a, oh, I'm going to like, I'm genuinely interested in knowing what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And like, I kind of shied away from that. I was like, I don't know what to say because I can tell that like, this is like a little bit judgment. Like that's something that I fear and I know I like should avoid fearing that because like the only judgment that matters is that from God. But that was like a time where I shied away from like trying to take that opportunity to educate people and to like lead them in the right direction and lead them to Christ. And so like that's something I've been working on is like not being fearful of answering a question wrong, but like being able to admit, oh, I don't know that. Let's find out together and like working with that. That's a good approach, yeah. Anything there, Catherine? I mean, I already said my, my peer pressure <laughs> incident, not yeah. a good one. <laughs> I think what I love about this, this moment of, um, of Peter's life is not that we would highlight the fact that he denied Christ three times, that we highlight Jesus' forgiveness on Peter. Mm-hmm. And I think we can all attest and raise our hands and say, either we've given him to peer pressure, bad or good, mm-hmm. um, but ultimately, I think when we, when we look at the idea of peer pressure and influence, I think we have to make a choice on the front end. By that, I mean, we know that we're going to be pressured into a situation. Mm -hmm. We already know that on the front end. It's not a matter of if in life, it's just when. We have stories to back that up. Mm 
right? So I think it, it's almost like a, a response now and almost a, an opportunity for us to think through when I have a moment of pressure, how will I choose to respond in the moment? So when peer pressure comes, how can we best use our influence for Jesus Christ? I think you hit on it a little bit and how you said it, maybe in a statement, but I think one of the, and this is something that, you know, graduated seniors uh, before they leave, this is always a conversation I like to have with them is that you have to determine before you ever get there who you're gonna be and what you're gonna do, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so like, I think when it comes to the areas in your life, you know where you're gonna face the greatest peer pressure and mm -hmm. your peer pressure may be greater than yours, uh, you know, or, or different than hers, right? And so um, one, of the, one of the ways that I think is, is knowing in the areas where, you're, where you may struggle, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a decision that you make before you ever get there. When, that, you know, when that, that pressure comes to act a certain way or to do a certain thing, if you've decided beforehand to say, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. So when I know I'm, I'm tempted with it, I've already made the decision before I left. But if you wait until you're in the moment, mm -hmm. you're probably, you've probably already lost the battle. Yeah. You know, I, I, think, I think that's a, one way to look I, at it. I, I kind of look at the, again, look at Peter <clears throat> and all that was taking place. Here's Jesus going through the process on his way to being crucified. Mm -hmm. Did Peter already know that was gonna take place? He was already told, mm -hmm. Jesus said, hey, I'm gonna be yeah. crucified. This is gonna happen. So it's almost as if Jesus, in a lot of ways, had already prompted Peter, mm -hmm. had already told him. And yet, when yeah. the moment showed itself, what happened? Peter still denied mm -hmm. three times. He had even said, I will die for you. Yes. That, that yes. earlier that night. No, right? Lord. No, Lord. Like, mm -hmm. And Peter's the same guy, too, when Jesus is trying to watch, wash, his, wash their feet in the upper room. And he's like, no, no, no. And she's like, Peter, you don't understand. Like, it's not even just the, the, the importance of me washing your feet, but it's the, the symbolism of my love and my forgiveness, my blood being shed for you to forgive and atone for you. Mm -hmm. Like, he knew all that going into it. Mm -hmm. And yet the pressure was so, oops, see, <laughs> do it all the time. The pressure was still strong enough, he still, still chose to deny. Yeah. Yeah, for me, like, a way that I, I've always, like, prepared myself, like, every day for peer pressure and, you know, just going about my day in general, like, making, making choices just generally. Um, ever since I was really little, my, when my dad would take me to school, he always said three things before I got out of the car. And the first was you're a Bales girl, Bales girl, which just means like, you know, you're part of this family, you represent our family, I love you. And then the last thing, he, or he would say salt and light. That's, that's like the main thing. Um, and he would say, be salt and light today. And that's just like, that's always stuck, to, like, stuck with me and that's been my life verse ever since I was little because mm. um, that's good that verse like mm -hmm. actually says like, you are the salt of the earth. Like, and the purpose of salt, you know, is to actually like make a difference, right? And when food doesn't have salt on it, you can taste the difference between when it does and when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like that one thing that he said to me has, has stuck with me. And there were times like where before I was going to make a decision, it was just like God just like popped that right in my mm -hmm. head. It was mm -hmm. like, is this mm -hmm. salt in light right now? Because he would say it to me every single day. The power of influence. There you go. Mm -hmm. The key ingredient to it all, be salt, be <laughs> salty. Well, cool. Well, girls, thank you all for, for joining us for this discussion. Yeah. Um, it's fun. And just talking about, again, this idea of influence. And I think even the overarching theme here is that even in Peter's denial, he, he had pressure, he denied. But Peter also got to experience the forgiveness and grace of Jesus, uh, even in his brokenness. And so might we learn from Peter and better prepare ourselves, but also just know that Jesus extend, extends grace to all of us and to all those listening tonight. Well, thank you all again for joining us for another week of Online Midweek. We'll see you next week. Man, I hope we took a great opportunity this week to really look at our lives, to look at ourselves, and to see that we can be using the influence that God has given us to make a difference in our world. Maybe today you realize that you can't do that because you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that you can't take a stand and use your influence for the kingdom because you don't know Jesus. And so if that's you, man, I just encourage you to text one of us as a staff member, um, the, the number 74788. 
uh, and you just type in made new, M-A-D-E-N-E-W to that number and we'll get a conversation going about how you can be a follower of Jesus. And so as we go out this week, remember to take a stand and to not be neutral, um, to use your influence for the kingdom, to tell people about Jesus with your words and your actions and we'll see you next week.